Uh, open the Bible in the book of Ezekiel chapter... Eight, one of the abominations of Israel before the destruction of the temple. Amen. Verse 14 says, And so he brought me to the door of the north gate of the Lord's house, and to my dismay, women were sitting there weeping for Tammuz. Verse 16. So he brought me into the inner court of the Lord's house, and there at the door of the temple of the Lord between the porch and the altar were about 25 men with their backs toward the temple of the Lord and their faces toward the east, and they were worshiping the sun towards the east. Amen? We worship the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know that the ancient interpretation of the winter solstice was this, you remember that. Let me read. In the northern, no, northern hemisphere, hemisphere, the shortest day and longest night of the year falls on December 21st or December 22nd, and it is called the winter solstice. Many ancient people believed that the sun was a god and that winter came every year because the sun god had become sick and weak. They celebrated the solstice because it meant that at last the sun god would begin to get well. Evergreen boughs rem reminded them of all the green plants that would grow again when the sun god was strong and summer would return. Amen? This is the interpretation. So, where it started, the celebration to bring trees to their houses for decoration and decorate them. So, let me bring back this to Babylon. According to the book of Revelation, Babylon is the great mother of all of, of harlots and of all the abominations of the earth. Amen? So it was in Babylon after the flood. Remember that after the flood, if you go to Genesis chapter 10, Noah had three sons. One was Sem, the other was Ham, or, and the other was Japheth. Ham had a son, and it was Cam, and Cam has Cush, and Cush has Nimrod. Amen? Are you understanding, right? It is in Genesis chapter 10. Bible says in verse uh, 6, the sons of Ham were Cush, Mishraim, Put, and Canaan. The sons of Cush were Ziba, Havilah, Sabbath. Amen? And verse 8 says, Cush begot Nimrod, and he began to be a mighty one on the earth. Amen? He was the one who led people to build the Tower of Babel. Amen? Because Bible says in verse 9 says, and he was a mighty hunter before the Lord. In some versions say that, in some interpreter says that he used to, to hunt animals and human beings. Therefore it is said like Nimrod, the mighty hunter before the Lord. And the beginning of his kingdom was Babel. You see? And Erek, Akkad, and Kalne, in the land of Shinar. From that land, Shinar, he went to Assyria and built Nineveh. Amen? You see, that man was powerful. You will see later those kingdoms. Amen? And you will see the interpretations of those kingdoms. So, Nimrod was the man 
who built the tower of Babel. Amen? According to Genesis chapter 10, verse 8 to 12. According to Micah chapter 5, verse 6. Micah says that Nimrod was the one who built Assyria. Amen? And the spouse or wife of Nimrod was Semiramis. Semiramis, according to the Bible, according to Bible, Bible doesn't register her name, but register the idolatry of Semiramis. Because it is said through history, I'm going to show you right now, that Nimrod married Semiramis, and Semiramis was a witch. This woman, when Nimrod died, was the one that built Babylon and made a story concerning Nimrod and proclaimed in the, world, in the known world in those days that Nimrod became God in the form of son, the son. Amen? And also when Nimrod was dead, she said that the God son conceived in her a child and called the name Tammuz, as we have read in the book of Ezekiel chapter 8 verse 14. Jeremiah 7 verse 18, 44, 17, 19, 25 speaks about the queen of heaven and she became the goddess moon. Amen. And in the book of Acts 19, verse 24 and 28, 35, it speaks about the Diana. Diana was the goddess of Ephesus. Amen? You will see later. Amen? Let, let us see, for example, Daniel 4, chapter 30, when Nebuchadnezzar said, it is not this great Babylon that I was, that I have built. So, John Gill's exposition on the entire Bible, which is an academic source, it says, though the king, speaking about Nebuchadnezzar, seems to have gone too far in ascribing the building of it to himself, at least he was not the original builder of it, Babylon. For it was built by many hundreds of years before he was born by Nimrod or Belos, who were the same in Genesis 10, 10 and was much increased and strengthened by Semiramis, the wife of his sons, Ninos or Ninos. You will see. Amen? That's why I'm speaking to you. Three characters in this presentation and also historical facts that became the gods and goddess of the ancient world. Amen? Nimrod became the god's son and Semiramis the goddess moon. Amen? And Tammuz also the god's son. Amen? Some authors dated the origin of Christmas tree and the cult of sacred trees to the old Babylon after the flood. That's why I brought this academic source as well, Robin Main Santa Tyson, written in 2008, page 127 says, the Christmas tree as we know it dates back only a few centuries. Amen? A few centuries, he's speaking about two centuries ago. Amen? Because in the 16th or 17th century, it was not celebrated. It was just introduced. You will see later. Amen? But the idea of sacred trees is very ancient. An old Babylonian tale told of an e evergreen tree which sprang out of a dead tree stump. The old stump symbolized the dead Nimrod. The new evergreen tree symbolized that Nimrod had come back to life again in Tammuz. This is one P 
picture of Nimrod with a tree in his hand 2,000 years before Christ. The founder of our denomination wrote a book called Revelation, an open book, and he affirmed that Tammuz's name means sprout, and he was the savior of the world. He says, after the death of Nimrod, the wife queen Semiramis I proclaimed Nimrod as Sun God, or Baal. Then this shameless woman gave birth to an illegitimate, illegitimate child, who, no, no legal child, amen, whom she called Thomas, which means sprout or, or upshoot. And that also said he was the proper Nimrod who had been reborn. Also, the son Tammuz was worshipped in the Babylon cult. Semiramis claimed that her son was conceived in a supernatural way and that he was the promised seed of Genesis 3.15, the savior of the world. In other cultures, the son was called Horus, for example, in Egypt, and, and his mother Isis. Amen? Semiramis and Tammuz. What we know today, Mary and the Son. Amen? I am not denying the fact of Christmas, as I show you in the video, right? Because it is historical fact. But Satan has deceived many. Amen? Let us continue. It is also said that the resurrection of Nimrod in Tammuz was by the winter solstice at the end of December. For example, these resorts, I didn't bring the, the front of the book because I want to bring something related concerning archaeology. Amen? Shaping the society, Christianity, and culture, special reference to Africa culture of Baganda, volume, volume 3, 2, page 112, says, Nimrod, known in Egypt as Osiris or Osiris? Cyrus, okay, was the founder of the first world empire at Babel, later known as Babylon, Genesis 10, 8, 12, and 11, Genesis 11, verse 1 to 9. From ancient sources, such as the epic of Gil Gil Gilgamesh, and records unearthed by archaeolo archaeologists, from long ruined Mesopotamian and Egyptian cities, we can reconstruct subsequent events. After Nimrod's death, it was 2,167 years before Christ, Semiramis promoted the belief that he, Nimrod, was a god. She claimed that she saw a full grown evergreen tree spring out of the roots of a dead tree stump, symbolizing the springing forth of new life for Nimrod. On the anniversary of his birth, she said Nimrod would visit the evergreen tree and leave gifts under it. His birthday fell on the winter solstice at the end of December. Amen? What I am showing you, for example, this Peter is concerning a Persia in Persian capital and it see the ancient people worshiping and honoring sacred trees. Amen. Also, Luis Martinez said this diabolical or devilish Babylonian cult during the dispersation with the Tower of Babel. Uh, Excuse me, this diabolical Babylonian cult during the dispersation of the Tower of Babel, what this cult was spread throughout the world in countries where this cult was spread, the mother and son were called by different names due to the division of languages and dialects in Babel. But the story remains the same. I'm quoting you books. This is not my invention, right? 
Many kings in honor to the legend of some god, Tammuz, name themselves in honor to this god. For example, in this case, we have at this plate and two god, gods, one goddess and one god. In this case, is Ishtar, which means Semiramis, and her husband, Damozi or Tammuz. And in the center, the green tree, evergreen tree. Let us read, for example, the sacred tree or the tree in religion and myth. Page six to seven. In Babylonia, the sacred tree was not doubted closely associated with Ishtar, the divine mother who was original, not a Sem Semitic, but an Akkadian goddess and who who's called together with that of her bridegroom, Tammuz, was introduced into Chaldea, and, and it gave us some dates between 3,000 and 4,000 before Christ. This resource is an um, academic resource, but not Christian resource. Amen? We know through the Bible that Ishtar was worshipped in the... Uh, uh, among the Israelites, and it was represented by a tree, according to the Bible. Let us see. For example, in the book of Judges, chapter 2, verse 3, that Easter was also Ashtoreth, and Baal, or Baal, was uh, Nimrod. Let us see. They, Israel, forsook the Lord and served ba Baal, right? Or Baal, Baal, Baal and the ash turrets. Let us see the Cambridge Bible for schools and colleges speaking about this. In Babylonia and Assyria, she was called Ishtar. In Syria, Atar. In Arabia, Atar, a male deity. By the Greeks, she was identified with Aphrodite. Let us continue reading Judges 11.40, that the daughters of Israel went for days each year to lament the daughter of Jephthah, the, Gile, the, the Gileadite. He promised when he said, he said, if you give me victory in this battle, I promise you to sacrifice the one who, see, who received me first, and it was his daughter. But that sacrifice was a dedication to a goddess, in this case was Ishtar, and that's why she remained in the mountains as a woman without man, just serving the goddess Ishtar. And let us see the interpretation. The present narrative suggests to some scholars reminiscences of Tammuz, Ishtar worship, which celebrated the annual death and revival of the divinity. Amen? And it, is, and it was worshipped by a sacred tree. Amen? Micah, Bible says, Micah chapter 5 verse 14, in the New International Version says, I will uproot from among you, Israel, your Asherah, 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 the goddess, pose when I demolish your cities. In the King James Version says, I will pluck up the groves out of the midst of thee. Asherah was a goddess that was Semiramis as well, but it was represented in a tree. The, thy groves, rather thy uh, karash, uh, was essential Canaanitish. Goddess corresponding to a feminine, feminine variety of the Assyrian Ishtar. Her symbol was a wooden pillar or artificial tree. I am quoting you the Cambridge Bible for school and colleges. Amen? Don't be afraid. <laughs> As you know that God confounded or confused the languages in the Babel Tower, so everyone was spread in different nations, amen, with different languages. But they 
they preserve that tale or that story about Nimrod as God's son and Tammuz, the God incarnated, and Semiramis, the goddess. Amen? The queen of heaven. That's why they have different names. In Assyria, Bible says Genesis 10 verse 10 to 12, that the beginning of the kingdom of Nimrod was Babel, and Bible says that he built also Shinar, and from the, that land Shinar, he went to Assyria and built Nineveh. In the ancient Assyria, we have records about the sacred tree worship. Let us see. For example, Ezekiel 4, 8, 14, this Albert Barnes notes on the Bible is also a, an academic commentary of the Bible says the weeping for of women for Tammuz passed into Syria and Palestine from Babylon. Amen. Tammuz being identified with Dubzi, whose loss was lamented by the goddess Easter. The festival was identical with the Greek Adonaikas or the lamenting also for Adonis, the god of the Greece, of the Grecians. Amen? Oh, sorry. Because of the dispersation of the Tower of Babel to the world, we can find this call to sacred trees in the old Assyria. For example, like the Hebrews, the Babylonians, and the Assyrians also taught of a sacred tree of life and rituals of sacred agricultural products associated with the spirit world. It is Baker Encyclop Encyclopedia of the Bible, Baker Book House, Volume 1 and the pages. Amen? Why well, I am quoting you these resources because some people try, will try to misinterpret me that I am just bringing a, a how do you call it, a, a doctrine of my denomination. It is independent on what my denomination says. Because in my denomination, some pastors and churches have Christmas trees. Amen? Amen? It is independent. It is my own research. Amen? But I am showing you that this sacred tree worship comes from the ancient time. Because Noah taught his sons, Sem, Ham, and Japheth, about the tree of life that was in the midst of the garden. Amen? And how Satan came and used the tree of knowledge to deceive Adam and Eve. Amen? That's why they took that story in those different countries, but adjust the story of Adam and Eve to Nimrod and Semiramis and Tammuz as they were gods. That's why that, that um, fact of the sacred tree, sacred tree is coming from the days after the flood. Because Noah told them, but remember that Ham was the one who was, the, his son was cursed by the Lord. Amen? Can you praise the name of Jesus? The worship of sacred tree in Assyria was intimately associated with that of the supreme deity, its symbol being incontestably one of the most sacred emblems of the Assyrian religion. As you see in the picture, the palace of Ashur Nasir Pal II at Nimrod, 9th century before Christ, Christ a prote protective spirit taking part in the Cone's Mary right before the Tree of Life. Let us quote another academic resource, the Babylonians. The king, at least in Assyria, was the primary participant in another fertility rite. This is the rite usually called cone smearing, frequently represented on the monuments, especially Assyrian bas reliefs 
of the first millennium before Christ, 1,000 years before Christ, most probably the tree which is frequently overspread with a winged disc was the tree of life. And the purpose of the ceremony was magically to identify the king with the tree of life and so to invest him with the fertility and longevity of the tree. As you see, worshiping a tree. Amen? Isaiah chapter 37, verse 37, you remember when the king Zedekiah, Ezekiah, Ezekiah, or Zedekiah, Ezekiah was the one that the Lord said, that Isaiah said, prepare your house because you're going to die. You remember? No, it was, yes, but it was later. But before this, Bible says that the king Sennacherib came and, and besieged the city of Jerusalem. And they came to destroy all the Israelites. Amen? But this king came to Isaiah and they prayed. And the Lord sent an angel and destroyed this army that was around Israel. 185,000 soldiers died that morning. You remember? Amen? So, remember that God and this king, Sennacherib, fled to Assyria to worship his God. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 37, verse 37, So, Sennacherib, king of Assyria, departed and went away, returned home, and remained at Nineveh. Now it came to pass, as he was worshipping in the house of Nishrak, his God, that his sons Adramalek and Shareser struck him down with the sword, and they escaped into the land of Ararat. According to myths, myths, myths of Babylon and Assyria, this book, it says that Nishrak, the word Nisr, Nisr, signifying in all Semitic language an eagle, as you see in the in the picture. Amen? And this deity is referred to in the Bible. I mentioned you, Nishrok, that God. Amen? Professor Pinches is certain that Nishrok is assured. Amen? And the interpretation that it, it is given is, and it was to Marat Merodarak to give the reading, Nimarat, equal to Nimrod. It means that Nimrod and the sacred tree, as you see in this picture, was worshipped in Assyria. And this Nimrod was that God Nishrod, that is worship, that is related in Isaiah chapter 37, verse 37. And the Bible shows the God Nishrod. Amen? But archaeologists show the pity of that God and the sacred tree. Amen? Other pitiers that were, or how do you call it, uh, art in those days showed also Nimrod as, as a God with eagle, with uh, wings. Worshipping the tree of life. Wingy, winged deities kneeling beside a sacred tree in the palace of Nimrod. It, 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 this um, art is in the British Museum. Also fish gods in the tree of life. Assyria 700 before Christ. Amen. Let us see in Canaan. Canaan, you know, it was the promised land that the Lord promised to Israel. Amen? And that's why when the Israel was about to enter this promised land, the Lord gave commandments concerning the gods of this wicked land. And one of the commandments is in Deuteronomy chapter 16, verse 21. You shall not plant for yourself any tree as a wooden image. In this case, it was Asherah or Ashira, amen, the goddess, near the altar which you build for yourself to the Lord your God. Amen? Hey, can I tell you something? According to this verse of the Bible, that's why I don't put any tree close to the, 
the worship place. Amen? As many churches do. Amen? Because I know the historical background of this. Amen? Nearly 1,500 years before the Christian era, and no more than about 850 years after the flood, Moses charged the Israelites concerning the idolatrous practices of Canaan, whose land they were to inherit. For example, this is the goddess Asherah, how it was worshipped. Amen? Deuteronomy 16.21, I have read. 2 Kings 17.10, 10, in spite of the, uh, of the ban, Israel committed the sin. Because if you read, if you read, if you read uh, 2 Kings 17.10 says, they, Israel, when they apostatize, when they backslide, Bible said they set up for themselves sacred pillars and wounded images. That word wooden images in the Hebrew word, it means Asherah goddess. On every high hill and under every green tree. So they left all the commandments of the Lord their God, like this commandment. Amen. Made for themselves a molded image and two cups made a wooden image and worshipped all the hosts of heaven and served Baal. Amen. Let us see another resource. The sacred tree or the tree in religion and myth. Written by Mrs. Miss, Mrs. J. Philip, Phil, Philpott, page 8. Amongst the Canaanites, every altar to the God had its sacred tree beside it. And when the Israelites established local sanctuaries under their influence, they set up their altar under a green tree and planted beside it as its indispensable accompaniment an asherah, which was either a living tree or a tree like post. This Asherah was undoubtedly worshipped as a sacred symbol of the deity. Originally, it appears to have been associated with Ashtore, Ashtorethor, Astarte, the Syrian Easter. The revolting character of whose worship perhaps explained excessive bitterness of the biblical denunciations, as you see below. The, the text. Amen? The conception of trees as demonic beings was familiar to all the Semites. Semites? Uh, no, it's S A Semites, uh, co co corresponding to the Arabians. No, see, the Semitic race, it means the descendants of Sem, no, not them, not they. Semites and the tree was adored as a divine in every part of the Semitic area. Even that stationary Semite, the modern Arab, holds certain trees invaluable, invi inviolable as being inhabited by spirits and honors them with sacrifices and decorations. Up, up to this day, the traveler in Palestine, sometimes lights upon holy trees hung with tokens of homage. You see, two sources, academic sources, and the way how. Assuming that you know that the birds sleep in the trees, they used to believe that demons or spirits used to come to dwell under those sacred trees. Amen? This is what they used to believe. I don't know if it is real. God knows it. But according to the Bible, Second Corinthians, First Corinthians chapter ten, or Second Corinthians chapter ten, it says that verse twenty. Can you go, please? I am not scaring you, right? <laughs> but it is historical facts. <laughs> Maybe, maybe, yes. 
Okay, First Corinthians chapter 10. First, first, first Corinthians chapter 10, verse 20. Rather that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to demons and not to God and do not want to have fellowship with demons. Verse 19 says, What I am saying then, that an idol is anything or that is offered to uh, idols is anything, rather the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to demons and not to God. It means that when the demons... When the Gentiles used to bring sacrifice to the idols, they are not offering sacrifice to the idols. As Paul is saying, they are offering the sacrifice to the ones who are behind the idol, and it is demons. Amen? It means that a, 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 an idol is a habitation or place for demons to dwell. Amen? So it means that in those days, as it is registered in this resource, the sacred tree or tree in religion and myth, it says that in those days, the conception of trees as demonic beings was familiar to all the Semites. And the tree was adored as a divine in, in every part of the Semite area. Amen. Let us continue. For example, John Gill's exposition of the entire Bible is speaking about in 2 Kings 23 verse 4 when Joshua the king brought reforms in Israel because Israel backslid in such a way that they brought those idols into the temple of the Lord. Can you imagine the, the kings before Joshua brought even prostitutes into the temple of the Lord because one way to worship Asherah, that goddess of, of, of the agriculture in order that if you want your, the, your how do you call it, crops to have um, abundance you should pay an homage to that goddess Asherah and Baal. How come? Sexual activity to come to the temple with the prostitutes of those goddess and to have sex. It was the way. Amen? Fertility gods. And Josiah, the king commanded Hilkiah, the high priest, and the priest of the second order to bring forth out of the temple of the Lord all the vessels that were made for Baal and for the grove. In this case, grove is Asherah or Ashtoreth, which was worship in a tree form. The idol of the grove, it says John Gill, or Asherah, that is Ashtoreth, or Astarte, the same with Venus, or the moon, as Baal was the son, the one, the husband, and the other, the wife, according to the Jews. And it gives us the historical source. This was Baal as the husband and son God and Ashtoreth or Asherah, the goddess moon, husband and wife. Amen. Let us see in Egypt. Amen. Remember that they were spread out into the world and brought the same belief. Amen. Ezekiel 88, 14, 16, that they were weeping for Tammuz in Israel, and also they worship the sun toward the east. Amen? The same book, Lysimertes wrote, after Nimrod, but also in the patriarchal, patriarchal era, Job rejected the Babylonian idolatry initiated by Nimrod. If you read Job 31 to, from verse 26 to 28, it says, If I beheld the sun when it shined, or the moon walking in brightness, John Gills gives the explanation to this. So the ancient Egyptians worshipped the sun and moon, calling the one Osiris, 
and the other Isis. With the Egyptians, Apollo, who is the son, is called Horus. And Microbius, the historian, relates it is said to shine. Horus, the son, or Osiris, it means the god sun, and Isis, the goddess moon. It is in Egypt. This Tammuz was worshipped also in Egypt as Osiris, Nimrod resurrected. That's why the legend of the three came to this country. John Gill's exposition of the Bible, speaking about Ezekiel 8.14, the second commentary of the Bible. It says, this Tammuz is the Osiris of the Egyptians, the same with Misraim, the first king of Egypt, who being slain in battle, his wife, his order, his wife, his order, that he, she, his wife, order, yes, that he should be worshipped as a god. And every year, lamentation made for him. And indeed, Osiris and Adonis seem to be one, the same, only in different nations called by different names, as I mentioned to you already. Mention is made in Plato, the philosophers. Plato, the philosophers. Phaedrus, the volume 3, page 974, it says, of Tammuz, as king reigned at Thebes over all Egypt, and was the god called Amun. No doubt the same with Tammuz. I am quoting you primary sources. Amen? Let us see the duration of the worship trip. The ancient, the ancient Egyptian worship a god called Ra, who had the head of a hawk, and who wore the sun as blazing disc in his crown. And the solstice, when Ra began to recover from the illness, the Egyptians filled their homes with green palm rushes, which symbolized for, the, for them the triumph of life over death. The Illustrated London News in 1854 says, the birthplace of the Christmas tree is Egypt, and its origin dates from a period long antecedent to the Christian era. The palm tree is known to put forth a shoot every month and, uh, and a spray of, his, of this tree with 12 shoots on it was used in Egypt at the time of the winter solstice as a symbol of the year completed. You didn't know about these historical facts. <laughs> to be honest, when I was doing this research, I wondered as well, like you. Amen? But I cannot deny what it is written in history. Amen? Let us see Rome. Amen? I don't have any text to quote. The ancient Rome, across the Mediterranean Sea, the early Romans marked the solstice with a feast, a feast called the Saturnalia, in honor of Saturn, the god of agriculture. The Romans knew that the solstice meant, meant that soon farms and or orchards would be green and fruitful. To mark the occasion, they decorated their homes and temples with evergreen boughs. Let us see illustration, London News, 1854, volume 16, page 645. The palm tree spray of Egypt on reaching Italy, Italy became a branch of any other tree. The tip of the fir was found most suitable from its pyramidal or pyramidal, like this, right? or conical shape in this way, and was decorated with burning tapers lit in honor of Saturn, whose Saturnalia were celebrated from the 17th to the, first, the 21st of December, the period of the winter solstice, even before Christ. 
Amen? Another allusion to this mythologic, mythological tradition is found in the story told by the Roman poet of, of it, and it is the resource of the mother of Adonis being changed at the moment of giving him birth into a tree. As Adonis, the child was symbolized as the branch. His mother, in keeping with the symbol, Matt's needs have been have been represented as a tree, as you see in the picture. Mm -hmm. Amen. This took place centuries prior to Christian age. Across the Roman Empire, at year end festivals such as Saturnalia and the January can calends. Varieties of evergreen boughs adorn homes, temples, and public statuary, streamers, ribbons, and images of the god Saturn adorn trees during the Saturnalia. This is the Christmas Encyclopedia, third edition. You may find this. Amen. So we ignore many things, right? Why people adorn houses and those stuff? They do by tradition, but they don't know the origin. And they don't know what is behind this. Bible says, and you will know the truth, and the truth set you free. Free from traditions. Free from pagan customs. God, have you ever imagined how the kingdom of Jesus Christ would be on the earth? Do you think that when Jesus Christ is reigning on the earth, this world will be the same? I don't think so. He will reign on the earth. Amen? And according to the Bible, I have read Zechariah, especially Zechariah chapter 14. You may find, you may find in Zechariah 14, that in the millennium, the kingdom of Jesus Christ on earth, amen, the nations will come to worship the king in Jerusalem. But I, and to keep the, the, the festivals and the seven feasts of the Jews at the tabernacles, and leavened bread, and Pentecost, those festivals. But it is not mentioned any about Jesus' birth or those stuff. Amen? Decorations. Yes, Bible speaks about decorations. And it is given in Leviticus concerning the holy things of the Lord. But these are pagan decorations, not Christian decoration that came out from the Bible. Amen? My purpose is not to hurt anyone, just to show you the truth. Amen? For example, the new encyclopedia Britannic, Britannic, Britannic Volume 3 says, the early Christians which the date of the, uh, the, uh, of the birth of Christ. Amen? Yeah, I, I, as I mentioned to you, when it says the early Christian, it, it refers to the fourth century Christians. It means... 400 years after Christianity began. Amen? The early Christians which the day to coincide with the pagan Roman festival. And it was 332 by Constantine, as I mentioned you in the last message. Making the birthday of the, of the unconquered son, Natalie Solis Invicti, in the Roman world, the Saturnalia, December 17th, was a time of merrymaking and exchanging of gifts. December the 25th was also regarded as the birth date of the Iranian or Ira Iranian mystery god Mith Mithra, the son of righteousness. On the Roman New Year, January 1st, houses were decorated with greenery and lights and gifts were given to children and the poor. Similar today. Amen? David Bellew, 
the landscaping expert with a master's degree in the University of Massachusetts, Massachusetts. <laughs> 1983 says, Pagan in the past did not cut down whole evergreen trees, bring them into their, uh, bring, they used to bring them into their homes and decorate them that would have been far too destructive of nature. But during the Roman celebration of the feast of Saturnalia, pagans did decorate their houses with clippings of evergreen shrubs. They also decorated living trees with bits of metal and re replicas of the god Bacchus. Bacchus was a god in Rome. For example, we see in this ancient sarcophagi in Rome, in the Vatican, Bacchus and a tree. Amen? Let us see. This Roman god Bacchus, Bacchus was Nimrod. In other words, the Romans also decorated living trees with bits, metal and replicas of their god Bacchus. It means Nimrod. <laughs> Amen? Genesis 10, 8, Cush begot Nimrod. John Gill's exposition of the entire Bible says, in the Greek version, Nimrod is called Nibrod. And by Josephus, the historian, Nimrod, which is a name of Bacchus. And indeed, Nimrod is the same with the, is the, same with the Bacchus of the heathens in Rome. For Bacchus is no other than Bacchus, the son of Cush. You see, it has relation. That's why when they used, in the Saturnalia, when they used to bring those trees, they were worshipping Bacchus or Nimrod through these sacred trees. Amen? Tertullian, you know that Tertullian was a Christian theolo theologian of the third century. And he wrote on Idolatry 15, as I mentioned to you, that by the Saturnalia time, according to Tertullian, pagans used to decorate their houses with clippings and evergreen shrubs. They also decorated living trees with bits of metal, as I mentioned to you. Let us read. Because Tertullian, who was a Christian theologian, before Christmas was established, criticized that many Christians were keeping the Saturnalia, amen, and decorating their houses. And look at what he says. You will now a days find more doors of heathens or pagans without lamps and laurel wreaths than the doors of Christians. Amen? Do you understand? If it is an idol's honor without doubt, an idol's honor is idolatry. Do you say the lamps before my doors and the laurels of my post are an honor to God? They are there, of course, not because they are an honor to God, but to him who is honor in God's stead by ceremonial observances of that kind, so far as is manifest saving the religious performance, which is in secret appertaining to demons, as I mentioned to you, 1 Corinthians, 19 to 20. There are among the Romans even gods of entrances. And I mentioned to you last time on Idolatry 15, that he wrote a list of different Roman gods, but I didn't bring to, the, to you. Gods of the entrance of the houses. Amen? And they used to decorate, the, you know. Among the Greeks, likewise, we read of Apollo, Tiberius, of the, uh, for example, of the door, the god of the door, and the Anteli or Anteli demons as presiders over the entrances. Let therefore them who have no light light the lamps daily in the Saturnalia. Let them over whom 
The fires of hell are imminent, affixed to their post laurels, doomed presently to burn. Can I tell you something? You know, the Lord in Deuteronomy chapter 6 commanded Israel to adore the entrances and the houses, not with evergreen and those lights, but with his word. You remember? These words that I say to you shall repeat to your children. And you write in your post of the laws. Have you read this part of the scripture? I have not found any home Christian ha or Christian house with verses of the Bible written and adorning the house. But I have found as Tertullian. <laughs> More the pagan decorations. You want to decorate your house? Put verses of the Bible. Can you praise the name of Jesus? <laughs> Amen. This is the difference. Amen. And those who defend those decorations, they don't have any verse of the Bible. And what is the commandment of the Lord? Deuteronomy chapter 6. Let us go. I want to pay more uh, to give, to um, highlight this part because it is more important than what the pagans do. Amen? Hallelujah. Verse 4. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Verse 5. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. And these words which I command you today shall be in your heart, first of all. And you shall teach them diligently to your children. And shall talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise up. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as, a, as four frontless between your eyes. And verse 9 says, wonderful, right? You shall write them on the doorpost of your house and on your gates. But the pagans, as they didn't have the Lord, they used to decorate with the gods of the Greece, of the Grecians, and the Romans. Amen? Which are the gods of the entrances. Demons. That's why Tertullian says, you don't need to put lights in your house as, de as decoration. Because you are the light of the world. And you are a tree evergreen. Read book of Psalm chapter 1. Blessed is the one who meditate in his word. He shall be like a tree planted. You understand? We are the righteous one. We don't need to put an evergreen tree in our house. Because we are. That's why he says, you are the light of the world and a tree evergreen. Because people used to do it. If you have renounced temples, make not your own gate a temple. Clothe not your own house with the appearance of a new brothel. <laughs> to be honest, it is clear, right? Or not? Amen? I am not forbidding you. I am not condemning you. Please, please, please don't misinterpret me. I am just showing you history. I am showing you the truth. You want to decorate your house, put the word of God, as the Bible says. But of course, it is up to you to do it. Amen? In Greece, Tertullian made an allusion to the same custom of honoring trees by decorating in it in Greece. Antinician Christian Library says this, quoting Tertullian. Tertullian says, how much nearer the mark of if these idol title, title mongers had called him Parcapian after certain Athen Athenian customs and the editors says, 
alluding to the olive branch ornament with all sorts of fruits, compare our Christmas tree, which was carried about by the boys in Athens, in a certain festival. The ancient Greeks, let me see the time. Ooh, the time is over. Sorry, let me pass fast. Amen? Let me pass fast. Amen? For example, Tammuz was identified the eternal youth, the Son God. Amen? Let me pass fast. Hmm. In ancient Greece, the fir tree sacred... Okay, Germany. Uh, German used to worship as well the festival of the Christmas tree at the present day so common throughout the whole of Germany is almost undoubtedly a remnant of the tree worship in, of their ancestors. Um, as the winter solstice, pagan Germanic tribes erected fir trees in their homes and burned fir boughs to welcome the annual visit of a domestic goddess variously known as Hertha, Bertha, Bir and Pirkta, who was believed to appear through the smoke bearing luck and blessing for the household regarded as a symbol of longevity and eternal life for centuries, for centuries prior to Christian age. In the early Christian times, the church, it means the Roman Catholic Church, resisted the pagan European custom of making seasonal decoration out of the winter greenery. The 6th century Second Council of Braga, which it was 572 uh, AD, forbade Christians, it means Roman Catholic people, the use of green boughs in home decorations. Because of the pagan associations, okay, it is opposed, okay. Let us see the, ja, to finish, let us see the origin of Christmas tree within Christianity. How it came into Christianity, knowing that it came from Babylon throughout different cultures and nations. Amen? But how it was introduced into the Christian Catholic Church. There is a story in the 8th century. The newly named monk Boniface traveled to Germany. Boniface knew that in winter the inhabitants of the village of that place gathered around a huge old oak tree known as the Thunder Oak. Oak? Oak. Oak. Dedicated to the god Thor. This annual event of worship centered on sacrificing a human, usually a small child, to the pagan god. Saint Boniface grabbed an axe and chopped down the thunder oak of mighty Thor and he said and it is written in these sources I brought two different sources this little tree a young child of the forest shall be your holy tree tonight it is the wood of peace it is the sign of an endless life for its leaves are evergreen see how it points upward to heaven let this be called the tree of the Christ child. Gather about it, not in the wild wood, but in your own homes, where it will shelter no deeds of blood, but loving gifts and rites of kindness. This is the first time, amen, when some Boniface destroyed that pagan god, the tree, and brought into the house in order that people don't sacrifice more children. This was the first time. Amen? Let us see in Germany. And it is the first time that a Christmas tree was brought in a chronicle from Stromberg written in 1604, a widely seen as the first account of Christmas tree in German speaking lands, records that Protestant artisans brought fear fear tree into their homes in the holiday season and decorated them. An early attempt to keep the Christ in Christmas followed in 1657 when Strasbourg, 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 
cler clergyman, <laughs> sorry, for, clergyman, and a Protestant theologian, Johann Conrad, angry condemned the practice in his book, The Milk of the Catechism, among the other trifles with which they commemorate Christmas time, often overtaking the word of God or holy observances is the Christmas or the fir tree. Don, Don Horner fumed, fumed, fumed that word is like uh, put in the sm smoke, uh, destroy, <laughs> amen? He destroyed, and it would be much better to direct the children toward the spiritual cedar tree of Jesus Christ claims that Martin Luther himself invented the Christmas tree. Okay, let us finish. Conclusion. Amen. This conclusion is given by Alexander the Reverend, Ale the historian and Reverend Alexander Hyslop. And he wrote the book to Babylons a century before, ago. The Christmas Christmas tree, now so common among us, was equally common in pagan Rome, in pagan Egypt. In Egypt, that tree was the palm tree. In Rome, it was the fir, the palm tree, the, the, no, the noting, the pagan Messiah as Baal, Tamar, the fir, referring to him as Baal Berith, Baal Berith, Baal Berith. The Christmas tree was generally at Rome, a different tree, even the fir, but the very same idea was implied in the palm tree, was implied in the Christmas fair. Fair, fair, right? For that covertly symbolized the newborn God as Baal Berith, Lord of the Covenant, and thus showed forth the perpetuity, perpetuity and everlasting nature of his power. The Yuli log is the dead stock of Nimrod. They fight as the sun god, but cut down by his enemies. The Christmas tree is Nimro revivus or quickened. The slain god come to life again. Amen. I made a relationship, the tree Baal, Nimro, Babylonian Savior, and the tree of Christ, child. Traditions of Eden says Baal Berith, which was also one of the titles of the pagan Messiah, signified the Lord of the Covenant, was almost identical with Baal Heret, which signified the Lord of the Fear Tree. Hence, the Fear Tree became a symbol of the Babylonian false Messiah. And what this preacher says, this little tree, a young child of the forest, shall be your holy tree tonight. It is the wood of peace. It is the sign of endless life. For, it is, for its leaves are evergreen. See how it points upward to heaven. Let this be called the tree of Christ child. Gather about it, not in the wild wood, but in your homes, that it will be shelter of this. Amen. You see the relation? But Christ, our Lord Jesus Christ, is not a tree. Amen. He is not a tree. Of course, he says, I am the true vine, and you are the branches. This is a metaphorical language, but not physical or real language. Amen? So, conclusion is, it is coming from Babylon. Amen? Decorations, it's Christmas tree, and everything, right? I am not going to condemn anyone for practicing it. Just showing you the origin. Amen? And it has a background that many don't know. But my purpose is to show you the truth. Jesus Christ is no a tree. He is the true vine. Amen? He is the body. Excuse me. He is the head of the body. We are the church the body of Christ. Amen? So we don't worship any tree. We don't pay attention to this. Amen? Amen. We obey the word of God. I invite you, if you want to decorate, I used to do that in my house, but to put, I used to print some verses of the Bible and to put in different places of my house, but the time made that the glue 
dried up and fell down. <laughs> I, I said to my wife when we reached uh, Colombia, we are going to buy a nice pictures of Bible verses at home in order to show people that we fear God and love God. Amen? Amen? So if you want to do the same, try your best to decorate your house with nice pictures about the Word of God. Not about saints. Not about Jesus. Because the Bible says that also it is idolatry. Amen? But the Word of God. I advise you instead of. Amen? So, I invite you to stand up. Let us pray, Heavenly Father, thank you for allowing us to learn more about your word concerning the works of darkness, that we don't participate in them, but on the contrary, we expose them, Father, to give you all glory, to give you all praises, Lord. We bless your holy name. Thank you for showing us the truth. Thank you, Lord, for also giving us understanding about the real birth of Jesus Christ, the incarnation of Jesus Christ that brought salvation into the world. And we believe, Father, that Jesus one day was born on this earth to die on the cross, to give his life for our lives, to redeem us from condemnation. And now... He is alive and remain at your right hand, Father, forever and ever. Jesus, the God, man, I praise your name. I worship you, Lord. I give you honor and praises because you are my God and I belong to you, Lord. You are the living God. You are the living God and I praise your name. I worship you, Lord. I worship you. There is none like you, Lord. Help us to obey you, Lord. Help us to follow you. Help us to, to hear, to receive your word all the time, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Sister Asina, can you call it the offering, please? Amen. How many of you are happy? How many of you are offended?